What's up everyone? I thought today that would be a good idea to show how I use the bits and pieces of information that I put into my castle tutorials and how I put them together to make a full castle. So this is a 2x2 two two chunk, a 32x32 32 32 block castle. The boundaries are marked by the beacons. So I'm going to talk a little more in depth than usual today about how I went about each step of the build. And at the end of the video, I'm going to put a time lapse of me finishing up the surrounding environment uh, outside of the boundaries and leave a download for the world in the description. I did about 40% of the interiors. I'm really not a fan of doing interiors. I love looking at them. I just don't really like doing them. So I won't cover them a whole lot in this video. Um, but the floor plans are important, so I will go over that. But I left pretty much everything in the main keep blank. So if you want to use this castle to play in, uh, you can fill that up however you like. Uh, this is all built in creative with some simple world edit commands, but everything placed here is possible in survival too. I loaded up a world and found a nice place high up where you can see in every direction that isn't too crazy with mountains or forests. So all the vantage points were good, both looking out from the castle and looking up to the castle. I want to be cool looking if you're away from the castle. So the first thing that I wanted to start out with was a two-dimensional floor plan, basically outlining the walls and towers. I specifically didn't want any part of it to be symmetrical. At some point, I do consider two towers around the front gate, but I decided to look too much like a McDonald's playhouse. I went with two towers of varying height, uh, a main keep, and a gatehouse as the main features of the castle. Since I have such a small space to work with, it was pretty obvious they just need to go around the corners. I, I didn't really have any space to put any of those things on the inside, so I focused mostly on what the space between the towers would look like rather than how the towers would look like at this step and where you would walk if you were on the ground. Once I got a walking space I felt was comfortable and made sense, I filled in the blank space with uh, colors of wool that I marked for various things like uh, one color is for where I want overhangs or, or side buildings. And at this point we aren't too locked into anything, all this is subject to change. Uh, once I got a floor plan I liked, I started with very basic walls, just raised everything up with world edit. Uh, the castle is between something like 12 and 32 blocks tall at varying spots, and the composition of the walls is 40% stone, 30% stone brick, 20% cobblestone, and 10% andesite, and that's what I use for most of these builds. The walls and towers I use in this castle are pretty similar to the ones in my tutorials, uh, my other videos. Uh, so there's really no surprises there, um, and I wanted to show that I can use those tutorials in this castle. None of the spots outside of the wall are vulnerable. No glass windows and easy to reach places. Things that make sense like like uh, like small arrow slits instead for windows or for iron bars. Things that you would want to consider if you were defending yourself, which it's a castle. You, you have to think like you are. Um, I didn't start putting in any windows though until I had a very rough floor plan uh, because I wanted the windows to be on the same level as the floors and if I put the windows in first then the floors wouldn't match and you'd have a mess. So once I got all my doorways, that's kind of the first thing I focused, about, uh, focused on, and I put the floors in the buildings, uh, then knocked out the holes for the windows. And I put steps and overhangs on a lot of the windows to give the otherwise flat walls some depth. Because as you can see, the walls really aren't that complex. Little details here aren't as important as the overall picture in my opinion. Because there's so much stone in this build, I don't put a ton of contrasting blocks. It's really hard to go wrong with spruce as the main accent, and that's why I use here in moderation. Because this castle is so small, I really tried to make every inch of it feel useful, uh, whether it's watching along all points of the wall or no wasted space between the walls. And once I have things in place where I want them, you basically have your castle. The next thing that is left is to make it feel lived in. So there we have it. With those things that I've mentioned, you pretty much have your castle. And then it's just kind of your job to go around and detail it how you like. Uh, let's walk through it. I, I want to I wanna block off these things. Uh, the white wall, by the way, was within the, the 32 by 32 boundaries. Um, and I made sure that all the walls were within that so I could have overhangs So I, the side of the walls weren't so flat So really the castle itself was kind of like 31 by 31 or, or even less at some points But um, the first thing I want to do is walk through it 
as if you were just walking. I think that's a really important part of big builds. And I think it's a part that a lot of people kind of neglect because you see videos of people making gigantic builds and what are all the views uh, and all the camera angles? They're from high up. But that's not what the people living in the castle would see. So uh, even if you're playing in creative and nobody's walking around on the ground, to me it's still important to have cool views from below. So, for example, when I'm walking through this, I want the reveal of the rest of the castle to be interesting. And you, you walk through here, and the first thing that you notice is this, which is just kind of a decorative area. Makes you want to go up there, right? Like, that's interesting. That's like a place that you want to figure out how to be. And then you walk in, and then all of a sudden, there's things all around you. Um, like, like I really, a lot of my detailing is just throwing stuff like this in corners. A lot of clutter. This, I don't even know what this is supposed to be. But if someone saw it, they'd, they'd think that it's something, I, I guess. <laughs> Um, I put a little like toll house up here. Let's say you're walking up uh, to the castle and then, uh, you know, you check with the guards to make sure that you can get in. The gatehouse. I made sure that this was, this is something that I can cover in a, a video on its own gatehouses. But I, I really made sure that it was defensible. Uh, made the, you know, a drop down uh, gate and then a, a slot for it to drop down into. I think that's a cool little detail. There's a little uh, guardhouse in here that you can go into with machiculations and um, yeah, you can open those up. They, they don't function that good. Maybe they should open up the other way. But the rest of it, you know, going around the side, none of the walls should be super interesting uh, at the bottom to me because, you know, it, it's just wall. People shouldn't be able to climb them. Even stuff like this could maybe be a no-no. Uh, if you're really wanting to be realistic, people could use that to climb. But this wall would theoretically have guards on it at all times. The towers, we can go into the towers. They were kind of the first thing that I that I focused on. I, you know, I put my walls, I made my towers, and then I built around the towers. Um, I, I really just, you know, made this a circle and that a square. I put floors at so i knew that i had this wall here that people are gonna walk on so i put a door here i put this was like the first floor that i put in and then i put in the top floor and i was like well we can fit in an, another floor in between them so i just made some stairs and then put a floor here and then you know i'd come in here and i'd knock out some windows and then i'd go on the outside and make those windows look cool but this, this is really the extent of the interiors that i did i did go down here and and, you know, no one's ever, this is not lit very well, but no one's ever really going to see this stuff. And then some, like, bunks and stuff with curtains. So it feels lived in if you do that kind of thing. That kind of thing is really important, making your build look cool. I just really hate interiors. Uh, the other one, basically the same, just square. I, I just made a, a ladder all the way up to the top. Have a little bit more room in here. To do different things. If you were using this for like a survival base, you could easily put like a brewing, uh, you know, a brewing station in one of these rooms or something like that. Or, you know, at the bottom floor, you could have like a farm, some sort of animal farm or something. There's there's lots of space in, in, in these towers to to make it livable. Um, I won't I won't go into the main keep quite yet. Um for windows on the main keep, I allowed myself to use glass on the ones on the interior of the keep because you don't need those to be defended. Uh, no enemy is going to be scaling this wall, right? So uh, I allowed myself to get a little bit more de decorative on this side of the wall, whereas um, this one is pretty plain. Not a whole lot going on here. I did put windows here. I put a lip here thinking that if someone wanted to scale the wall, it would be harder. Maybe it'd be a better idea to just remove those glasses. Um, I the the idea I had here was that the whoever was in charge of the keep could come out here and kind of keep watch over everything, or maybe make like public announcements. I don't know if this is like big enough of a castle for like a a king, probably not. But you know whoever's in charge of it, and then the idea is that whoever that person is 
would probably be living up here. And then there's, you know, room for guards up here. And you can see forever up here. I mean, that mountain's kind of in the way. If I were putting this in my world to live in, to play in, I would probably go over here and put a watchtower right here. And then you could make a cool path all the way from here. It would look really cool. Once I'm done with this little segment, I'm going to actually build up around the environment. One of the things that really appealed to me about this area was that this little natural bridge here I thought would look really cool to walk across to have a road, um, especially walking up to it. That's just a really cool feel. Um, yeah, it's, it's just a lot of little details at the end and not... It, none of it's overly complicated. This is stuff everyone can do. Uh, the wall, the windows, I like to put little half slabs over them. Um, stuff like that. It's just little details that I've gathered. I put bells at pretty much every guard station. Every tower has bells. Um, because if, if they were to see something coming, they should be able to ring a bell, right? Uh, I don't know if I put one up here, but uh, I would put one up here. We can go in here real quick. I did do the floor layout. It, it's super dark in here um, because of the shaders, but I, I wanted tall ceilings because I I guess that's just something that I think about when I think of like cathedrals or, or um, you know, I've been in more cathedra stone cathedrals. I've been in castles. I've never been in a castle, but they all had high ceilings, right? And then over here, there was like a cool opportunity to make like a dungeon. Um, and then a, a big spiral staircase. You have to have a spiral staircase. One other thing that I thought about was that if if you have like where the royalty lives up here, actually there's so many floors. If you have the royalty where they live up here, but guards also have to come up to the ceiling to get up here, I would completely separate those areas. Uh, like different staircases go to those places. Because you you wouldn't want like guards going past where whoever's in charge is sleeping all the time, um, but that's just like little details that make this all feel lived in, and and that's like what I'm trying to get across that making everything feel lived in is like the difference between a good castle and an all right castle, in my opinion. Like down here, they're probably not going to keep they're not, not they're not mowing the lawns in the medieval times. There's a bunch of grass, right? There's really not a whole lot more to talk about with this castle. Um, you know, it looks pretty, you know, I, I like the way it looks. Uh, I didn't use anything too, like, advanced as far as, as techniques, building techniques. Um, I, I really just made sure that every corner of it felt lived in, especially down here. You can't walk anywhere without seeing clutter of some sort. So that's, that's my advice to you. Start with the, the floor plan, uh, raise it up, make sure that you get this, this variation of blocks. Otherwise it's, it's just, a lot of people do th this hyper detailed castle. I don't really do that. This wall over here is completely flat, except for arrow slits. Like a lot of these windows, they have insets in them. Like that has a step for an inset. This one's completely flat. It looks fine. This isn't the most appealing angle of it, but you know, if you walk up to it from this angle, you want to find out what's on the other side of it, right? Because that's obviously not the entrance. So, you know, it's things like that I keep in mind. Um, not everything needs to be super interesting. Not everything needs to be hyper detailed. Very simple techniques. Let's get on to detailing the surroundings and Thank you for watching everybody. If you like this, a like and a subscribe really does help me out. I appreciate it.